Hey everyone, this is Fox Minutes Radio. Wayne speaking here. Breaking news! I got my boy Justin Mulberry here. He's uh, a what do you, what do you DIT? Is that what you, do you call DIT? it? What does yeah. that mean, man? Digital imaging technician. Imaging technician. Ooh, cool. I thought it was information technician. <laughs> no. Yeah. We cycle through information, but right. it's a so different is, medium. What does that entail, man? So basically, the camera records onto um, about 70% of film the, in the modern age is digital, and the camera records onto a digital file, as well as the audio on set on feature films uh, records onto a digital file. Uh, what I do, my job, is to take those digital files at the end of the day and dump all of that footage, download all of those digital files onto a hard drive and store and uh, file that each digital item where it should be easily accessed by production. They can bring it up in what's called dailies. Um, it's small bits of film that we cut together for production to see what they've shot so far and um and as an extension of my job i also help production being assistant editor which is my favorite part of doing dit because that's taking those uh video files as well as those audio files and pulling them into a, a video editing software um, adobe premiere pro is my preferred preferred program but a lot of folks use uh, Final Cut Pro or Final Cut X now. Um, Avid is another great program. But uh, I take those video files and audio files and put them up on the timeline and synchronize them, and then take that specific clip that might be scene 23, uh, as well as scene 23, everything that that curtails, scene 23A, B, C, and D of different shots that production got. Right. And every um, take. Yeah, yeah, every take. Mm -hmm. And um, the, what'll happen is there will be a, another component um, to me on set that uh, is my correspondence with production. They're called the script supervisor. When uh, production films... Scripty. The scripty, yeah. Yeah. They, um, the script supervisor takes their, she, their grid, however they set it up, with scene, take number, and comments on it. And I leave a section, I like them to leave a section for me that says, for a check, that means this is the, the print take, the one that, one that production really liked. Mm -hmm. And all of the, in a sense, print takes um, on the scripties form, I can easily access and pull only those files that production needs to see. So it's the best takes that they're getting that mm -hmm. they can see because I put it together yeah, for them. You're, okay, you're basically doing an outline editing with yeah. all their... The, the, the takes they want but you still have you have to you you drop you dump everything so they have every single take they can pick and choose whatever yeah. but you took what the scripty said and boom you plugged it in so it's almost they you know without you know little effort i mean they're gonna have to do a lot of special effects and stuff yeah you know for editing and, and post but you pretty much glued it together thus far yeah just say you have maybe 20 takes of a certain scene you wanted and what kind of scene let's 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 do the scene so we'll, we'll say we're, we're filming a two shot of mm -hmm. two folks that are uh, at dinner or something and yeah. talking to each other. They're in an argument. They're in an argument and it's a, it's a couple, they're in an argument and the two shot is the wide that you get. Of just the two of them. Yeah. It's just the two of them and then you, you later film the close ups of each one. Mm -hmm. That's um, basic two shots sh or a shot composure structure right I, I can't speak a lot about that because i don't have a lot of cinematic experience um you could refer to a assistant camera or someone better on set that could explain that to you but um the two shot the wide shot they have they have 23 takes of maybe they like take seven take 12 take 15 take 20 and those are the print takes, the ones that they deem uh, they want the most of. The, the most coverage from that particular sh um, take, they like that one. So they'll, they'll use that one, and I'll take all four of those takes and put them up um, where you can... I synchronize the audio and the video so that production can see that take 
and how they'll utilize it from there, or how the editor will take those synchronized files from there and cut it into a master timeline. Is it, um, is it difficult to sync audio with visual? Uh, a lot of the time it's pretty easy because the uh, tools that production uses, audio and the camera, can synchronize on a universal time code, and I can take those time codes and just synchronize it but sometimes the camera will get off time code from the audio. It's just lapses in human judgment and uh, yeah. d difference in production hmm. or something. But usually they can get synchronized, so that makes it really easy. I can just um, right-click both of the audio and video file and say synchronize, and they'll, they'll be spot on 90% of the time. That's awesome, man. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's great to get a, a vision of what it's like <clears throat> moments after you, you just stop filming on set then it goes on yeah. to i mean you're on set and you're 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 dumping all this information right there right then and there you know um <clears throat> which is pretty cool i mean your jobs it sounds like tedious you know but, but it's fascinating when you get into the editing portion mm -hmm. of it if you like that kind of stuff me i don't have the patience for that <laughs> but i mean it's a certain type of person that doesn't mind doing that and i mean it's pretty cool in my mind and we'll get back to that but first, I wanna I wanna ask you like what brought you into this field and and why like who are you, bud? <laughs> Tell the world. So, I went to school at uh, I first started my freshman year at West Texas A and M, which is um, a codependent school from A and M in uh, Canyon, Texas, which is like an hour north of or an hour south of Amarillo, and I was there doing sports broadcasting. Um, that was my major. What I really wanted to do was color commentation on NFL games because I love football. The sport is just incredible to watch. I love yeah. it. And color commentation would be um, the statistics side of doing sports field announcing where the play-by-play -play is the main announcer and the color provides statistical analysis on certain players. Just He'll say if... if um, Brady Brock drops back to throw and he throws, then um, the color commentation would tell you how many statistical, like yeah, his, how many, his how many stats yards he and threw it and yeah, how many times he's Easy thrown like that. Yeah, yeah. So yards run and all that stuff. Yeah, I, I did that and it was kind of tedious to get into it. Um, there was already a team they had involved and I just I missed the opportunity to do that. Maybe I would do it later, but I ended up leaving that school and going with my then girlfriend at the time mm -hmm. to Sam Houston State in uh, Huntsville, women. Texas. And uh, that's where I spent the next three years doing school. But what started it for me was um, I made a stop motion film where you take different pictures of a, like a claymation is a good example. Right. Stop you motion's take a, cool, man. Yeah. I love stop motion stuff. It's man, tedious. It's, that is super that tedious. That is super tedious. You're, you're taking millions of pictures you know, for like, I mean, three minutes. How many yep. pictures do you think for three minutes? For short? three minutes, a good, man, three minutes. That's forever. Yeah. It's At a least long time. 20,000 pictures. Crazy. Something dude. to get through it. It just depends on how fast your characters are moving. How, how do you set that up? Like, what is your best? Because, I mean, I've always wanted to do it. And if I can, I mean, I have space. If I can set up some sort of camera and just do that shit, that'd mm -hmm. be fun. That'd be fun. Yeah, I mean,. It's, you got to get into it. You got to make sure you have the equipment for proper lighting because yeah. you need to make sure your, make your worlds appear real and you building your stage is really tedious unless you want to go for, because one of the, one of the scripts I wrote and, um, turned in as a school project was mm -hmm. this, uh, stop motion film about these little glass octopus figurines and me, myself, I, in the story, I take the the female octopus, presumably I'm going to sell it or do something with it, and the stop-motion film is about the little green octopus boy goes to save his uh, octopus love, the girl, and like goes and catches him in the car or something. I don't remember the way it ends. Or I think he has to, he has to fight like another... <laughs> I, he, me as a character goes to my girlfriend's apartment and puts the girl octopus with another octopus that the she has as a boy 
and the green octopus has to save her from that from that <laughs> evil octopus that's the girlfriend. So do you actually make the like, tentacles move and stuff? Uh, I don't make the tentacles move because the glass figurine wouldn't mm -hmm. allow that, but right. they they move in the sense that I, I move it, take another picture, I move it, take another picture, and the lighting was what the apartment lighting provided because it wasn't right. super well shot, but enough for a school project to accept. I mean, I believe I got an A in that class, if I remember right. But Let's just say you got an A. Yeah, let's just say I got an A. Right. Uh, when I my freshman year, when I was at WT, I started making a stop motion film for my then girlfriend at the time, and I just fell in love with film, the whole process of it, and then doing the video editing where I mm -hmm. match the music to, because um, with stop motion, like I don't have a lot of vocal parts, I don't need right. my characters to say anything, um, or but you had a it good would be score. Dif difficult, yeah, just to score, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I moved with her because I, I thought the relationship would work. But hey, man, we all <laughs> yeah. fall in love, fall out of love. It happens, bro. Yeah. If I didn't, if I wasn't quote unquote in love I, uh, at the time, I'd still be in Australia, bro. Mm -hmm. You know. Women. So. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Gotta love them, but. But anyway, in my sophomore year of college at uh, Sam Houston State, I took this uh, class for script writing. Um, because it was a, a qualifying course for my major, which was broadcast and film production mm -hmm. when I moved to Sam. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, I met one of my best friends, Chase Gibson, who... Shout out to now Chase Gibson. Lives, yeah, shout out to Chase. Uh, in Houston, who works now as a... He, he does sound, and he's trying to do um, assistant camera out in Houston. He's getting some pretty good gigs, and... He keeps going. He quit his day job, so props to him. Wow. But I met him He's there. He's off the grid. Yeah, and I started writing scripts from that class, and I wrote my first, fe uh, in a sense, feature film. I think I wrote it for 40 pages about a student alcoholic who, through the death of his younger sibling from alcohol poisoning, gets over his addiction to alcohol. Oh, shit. And... Uh, I wrote that first as a 45 minute or a 45 page script and tried to shoot it myself, which was one of the worst ideas I could have done because I convinced the the um, uh, staff of school, the faculty, that I needed to borrow a camera over four days of spring break to go film in Galveston for a student project. <laughs> Not that not that to think that we would be drinking a whole lot and make a stupid video or something but right. to actually put something into production but i i convinced them to do it and i tried to shoot this thing by myself and i there was, it was so overwhelming because it really takes a village to make a film even a student sure. film yeah. you got to have a lot of people on board hands. and yeah, yeah you can't have you can't you can't do it by yourself and the sooner people figure that out when they're in school to in film school make friends I mean, film <laughs> that's why you go to film school cuz yeah. everyone's going to film school for film so make some friends get yeah. a, get a group together definitely find who your people are that you can do things well because i did um after i wrote recovery um chase helped me on that one a lot he was my um he are we after I shot, tried to shoot it by myself, that failed, and he came to me and told me we should re, rewrite it something shorter, like a 25-page script. Right. And so we rewrote it and shot it together. He was my camera, and I was directing. And for for what we had together, we and we had um, my friend Gerald, who I'll explain later, on sound, and uh, just a lot of really good people that wanted to put a good product together. I mean, it. a lot of the writing I did in that project left more to be desired. It could have been a, it could have been a better storyline. It could, I mean, hey, it, I'm really it's proud of it for what it was, but as the first stepping stone into film. Um, because after that, I moved on to, uh, with Chase, this was our senior, after recovery was my junior year, um, and I actually used that as a um, credit for 
what's the special interest um, credit extra cur- extra curricular activity? No, <laughs> not extracurricular. It's uh, like you t- not a uh, thinking sabbatical. Something you you research in in lieu of taking a full class of production. It was a special interest course that was made so I could um, so I could shoot this film. Okay. This has a twenty initially is a forty five minute film. I turn it in and it's a twenty five minute film, and um, I'll remember it for yeah, no later we'll, we'll when we're talking. Going. Just say it um, out loud. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, so I finished recovery and then my senior year, we worked on another project together, Chase and I, that was more, a little bit darker. It was a project I wrote as a, um, a man who was desperate in gambling debt and was trying to pay off his debt by killing his wife to, to get the insurance money. Mm -hmm. And then what he would have to do is get the brother of the deceased wife to sign off on the uh, disbursement of the insurance funds and you like and, dramas huh yeah i like dra- writing dramatic drama. Stuff. that's cool man because i've had a lot of horror people on you know a lot of thriller it's cool to like get that dramatic mm-hmm. you know, sense and you know you know who i'd like you to have on is a uh, director from paper street pictures here in austin his name's aaron pictures. Kuntz. aaron Kuntz. He just uh, finished, they finished screening, the Camera Obscura was the first feature film I was a PA for when they were doing pickup shots. Okay. And I believe that was in 2012. Is he still doing work around? The city oh, yes. They, they just finished their feature film, their, their last feature How film. How you spell his last name? Uh, K-O-O-N-T-S. Kuntz. A- a- Ron. him and Cameron Burns as well as Alex Uting but Alex moved to Seattle hope he's doing good out there he's a good guy um, Paper Street Pictures? oh here he is and it's on the Fredo Quest cool man Let's yeah see. they're supporting Camera Obscura right now that mm-hmm. was the first thing I was a PA on and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, they were saying it's going to video on demand and in theaters in June. What? But I'm not, Ooh, I'm not that, at yeah. liberty to talk about it. Sure. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. Cool. Well, enough that. said. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so after that, I worked with Chase on this other project, Nine Acres, that was the uh, drama. And the brother, the, uh, the man who killed his wife has to meet the brother of the deceased woman to get the insurance papers signed and half of the script is their shakedown because really? the uh the man who killed his wife brings back up of the the woman of the boss because i i had a really dark um really shadowy character for the boss as he in the beginning of the script he's getting tortured by the boss and the the woman of the woman that's the assistant for the boss like says so oh, i can get the information out of him this would be my job mm-hmm. and we had some great um for what it was for that one what it was too we got uh, some great cinematography out of chase like he did some amazing things in that and we attempted to submit it to the Cannes film festival where I later attended as a um, with the school my senior year, I attended the Cannes Film Festival and interned for a company I Am Global that um, produced the um, Paranormal Activity movies. Oh wow! And cheap budget, man. They made so much money on those fucking movies, uh, dude. At the Cannes Film Festival, my film the format was wrong. So, because my professor submitted it, and they said the format was wrong, so he tried to resubmit it, and they don't take resubmissions. So what? I didn't know that my film didn't get into the Cannes Film Festival until I was attending, and severely disappointed. Whoa! Crushed, in fuck, fact, fuck you your might say. Man, that sucks. That's, it wasn't his fault. It was I. I just died. 
some things in life I don't understand, but you just got to move on from them, take your next breath, and keep going. Very zen, buddy. Very zen. So, um, we finished Nine Acres, and we were really proud of it. And Chase actually told me he's thinking about recutting it, that he was in the middle of doing that. So, maybe it might resurface. I mean, I can send you a copy and see what you think. Cool. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. I believe I have a copy on my computer I brought with me. Oh, you brought your computer? Sweet. Mm -hmm. Um... Dude, bust that shit out, man. <laughs> Fuck it. We're going to be fact-checking each other right now, dog. Fact-checking All right. It's a brief intermission as uh, my boy opens up his backpack. You rode your motorcycle here, man. It's crazy, dog. You finally got her. You got a, you got a chance to ride her. Yeah. What, what kind of, what kind of uh, bike do you got? It is a Honda 250 CBR. Oh, but it's only a 250 because I wanted to start on a smaller comp a smaller uh, bike so I could learn, teach myself. And the CBR, I have a model of a 500 on my desk, and mm -hmm. I love it. Just the look of it is amazing. And I thought if I could build myself into the 250, maybe I would buy the 500. But I'm also in love with the look of the Yamaha R1 oh. or the Yamaha R6. Let me check it. Yamaha R6? Yeah. It looks really good in like ice white with a cobalt blue. Oh. Ice white cobalt blue, baby. Yeah. Uh, the YZF R6? It's a Yamaha R6. Yeah. Well, there's a 2017 Yamaha YZF R6. Is this huh. what it looks like? Uh. No. That's an R8. Oh. Uh, no, it says R6. Hmm. Anyways. Yeah, you show me a picture, bud. We can pair pictures, bruh. On motorcycles. Either that or just midnight this black. This is Texas. Yeah. We're talking about motorcycles and real shit. <laughs> That's the way it goes. You're a nerd. That's <laughs> I'm a nerd for my job. Yeah. There's a difference. Folder. I was trying to find the uh, a link to it. I know I have it on Dropbox. I thought I had a folder hmm. with it in it. Videos, maybe. Yeah. Uh, what, what about? Um, so you're talking about a lot about films. You're, you're you've written some stuff. You did the animation. You did some dramas. And then whoa, what connected the DIT portion of that, like to where you are now from there to where you are now. So I was finishing up with Nine Acres, mm -hmm. and that was um, the two films that I wrote and directed, and that was the extent of what I wanted to do then with directing, because I was happy with right. where I left it. And um, there is a challenge in Houston. It's called the 48-Hour Film Challenge. Yeah, there's all over the country yeah. man, that happens, but this and one was get in a, Houston. I'll just, I was going to explain it, what it was. Sure. Go ahead. So um, you get 48 hours to write, shoot, and edit and turn in a film that the company, like when you, the, the group, there's different groups and they meet the host to draw out of a hat a genre, a film genre, a line of dialogue, a character's name, and a profession for that character. And you have to write this film. Um, How many shoot groups it. are competing typically, or in your case? Um, typically, there's about, I want to say about twenty or thirty groups, but maybe even more because the prizes they offer are really, really good um, film. I mean, like there's. I remember one year the the prize was a, uh, display for a red camera that would have been, really beneficial, like dragon. from ICANN. Uh, from a, a screen from ICANN, and then the the subsequent years they've had. So you get um, some pretty fucking cool gear. Yeah, or gear, or one of them was a pitch meeting with some professional production company, or potential to have investors. Um, p potential to have investors and money to shoot a feature film. That's dope. 
for the for the winners. How, how many uh, members of the team consist of each? So each team has. It can be however many. Uh, really? However many? Any? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's unfair. You can have like twenty I mean, dudes make yeah. a fucking awesome movie in forty-eight hours, where imposed like five people take a long time. Yeah, but the quality of the product still has to be the same. I mean, the quality quality of the product has to speak for how many people are a part of it. Oh, gotcha. So we have a small team of about seven people that are really good at doing their job, mm-hmm. and as opposed to like twenty people that all want a hand in everything. And the the creative team they had was only three people to write. So mm-hmm. they got focused. They love the story. They get it going and. Um, my friend Gerald, this was, I believe, my maybe my senior year. So I that's think so. 2000 and... That's 2013. 13. And Gerald, uh, who runs uh, Rival Studios in Houston, and they've done some pretty good short films and uh, loaned themselves out. We went to Mississippi and worked on a feature film, which I was DIT for. Um, they've got a pretty good thing going in Houston. But Gerald uh, approaches me, and actually, before he was, I cast Gerald to be an extra in my in recovery, and when we were shooting the the classroom scenes, and he was like, "You need to be a part of this film group, these friends we have, that do this professionally. You can't do this by yourself." So I subsequently joined Raven Films, and they helped me produce uh, Nine Acres. So I knew Gerald back then mm-hmm. in my school. Um, so Gerald asks, says, uh, I know you're interested, Justin, I know you're interested in editing, and I have this job for you that's kind of particular. I know you like to, to organize stuff like this, and you're interested in editing. So I have this job that you would take these, take the video files, you take the audio files, and sort them into scene and take number and then um put the put the files on the timeline and cut it to rough cut it together so once you finish i can just uh, me being the editor can uh, go over all of your work and just fine tune the small places where it need to be fixed so we can have a good product on time and you would be the most responsible person on set because you would be yeah. responsible for um obtaining all of the footage, making sure all the footage gets stored and um, taken care of. And uh, the editing part would be the most important that you make a rough cut so I can cut together the good parts and we can turn it in on time. And I was like, you need me? I got you, man. I'm going to do it. So, so you're doing that 48-hour project? Yeah, that, that project was called... Uh, go. Did we call it? We didn't call it Ghost in the Shell. It was. Oh, what were the four premises that or four? We had premises? sci-fi. Sci-fi. Which is really hard. We had. Especially, like, on a slim budget, man. Yeah, right. <laughs> the character's name was John something, and we made him a. The profession was, a doctor of some kind, and the what he did was he would place people in his chair and. Um, put the machine on, oh, over their head that in in they ingest uh gas that that he produces that makes them dream about um their past lovers that that have passed away oh so the people go, the men go see the men go see him so they can dream about their past lovers and they pay him for the services or something so he's a doctor by sort and oh, um mad scientist yeah we had uh, James Glenn Tucker, who's one of the main actors for Rival Studios, and he was the the character in the in the project that that put a loop in the system because he, he, he by rule you were not supposed to touch your you can fantasize about the person but you're not supposed to touch them or mm-hmm. it'll freak the machine out or f- freak out wow. the yeah so uh, James Glenn Tucker freaks out the machine and it's and kills himself in a sense by but it was re- it was really dramatic but it was really good yeah. and just being the first person to see all of the great footage we got and put it together really quickly and be under a time crunch and uh successfully do what i needed to do how much just, time did you have left before you had submitted it 
I think <laughs> I think we submitted it with like 20 minutes left. Wow. Yeah, it was insane. Mm-hmm. Shooting was shooting all night was crazy because there were so many there were so many scenes they wrote for different reasons that just got cut. Yeah. It was just wild. I can only imagine the things that they came up with. And so like, how long did it take them to write it? Um, probably about, I'd say a good three hours. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, whew, like how long was it? Uh, seven minutes. I think oh. seven minutes is the, the limit, the maximum or yeah. the minimum, the maximum. Okay. Hmm. But that was that was my first project doing DIT, and from then I just kind of grazed into it because I could get jobs doing that more than anything else. Like I'd I'd found my niche and mm-hmm. what I wanted to do, and um, my first uh, I found it on, I mean, because I didn't did that forty eight hour project and then kind of worked um, day jobs to kind of make the yeah. time pass, and one summer. It was summer of 2015, and one of I worked I had worked on a short film with Rival Studios that was a they were remaking a it was a docudrama about the Sam Houston team of don't quote me on the year because I don't know but they were undefeated and we had cast uh, a really famous Houston actor named Donnie Boaz who's subsequently been in. Um, Oh man, I don't want to get the program wrong. The the show is called Six, about SEAL Team Six, and then um, he he had been in some of the Forty Eight Hour projects too, and he was he's phenomenal. He's a great actor. Donnie Boaz. Mm-hmm. And then him and Willie Ames, who had a pretty successful career. This guy. Yeah, that's oh, him. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, Johnny Boaz. He's a handsome young chap, huh? Kind of looks British. You can kind of take a bet on how long he'll be on set before he takes his shirt off. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's That's a <laughs> bet they make in amongst the that's Houston funny. filmmakers. Let's see. Where's his IMDb? Let's see what he's in. Johnny Bo. Oh, wow. What a nerd. <laughs> you didn't say Johnny, did you? Oh, Donnie. <laughs> no, I did say Johnny. <laughs> Donnie would get on me for that? Really? No. Uh, let's see actor let's see uh let's see he's got a hundred credits yeah he's got a pretty good yeah road i believe less he was travel. on ncis let's see road less travel uh objective 11 daytime divas osprey and the terrible two are his recent 2017 film projects but he was uh, in the foreign exchange student uh <laughs> Let's see. Let's see, let's see if he was in in say see it. Six TV series. He played Buckley. Is that what you're talking about? Hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. He's a he's a really great actor, and he worked. Um, I worked on the docu drama series, and uh, who Gerald had on as an assistant camera was Orlando Briones, uh-huh. who works with. Um, Christopher Rodriguez and they run OC yeah. Films in Houston and they posted on Facebook and said are there any Austin DITs and I just responded to the comment I said yeah I do DIT I just kind of started going and hmm. I don't have much experience but I mean I, I have my 48 hour experience and uh, I'd really like to do this for you guys and so they hired me to do their feature film for three weeks in Laredo, Texas, in June. Oh fuck! Where were you stationed? Um, they had us at a, in Laredo, uh-huh. but they had us at a. I, I mean, guess. were you inside, outside? Like you had a nice, secure place because it's June in Texas. Oh it's yeah, no, no, no. they had a they had a production office for me. Oh. They they provided all the equipment for me. It was amazing. They had a they um. The city of Laredo really reached out to them, okay, and helped out with everything they need because it's giving them good publicity, uh-huh. and <laughs> good publicity in a rather negative market. <laughs> I uh, I can't speak too much about it, but where is it, Laredo? Laredo, Texas. It's right on the border. Uh, okay. And uh, 
the the project was called Journey about a, a Mexican immigrant who um, gets his girlfriend pregnant and is trying to find oh, a sure. job and then gets deported and it's his mission to get back to his his pregnant love and the script was fantastic it was amazing like and some of the scenes they got from oh man i'm not even gonna remember his name yeah that's gonna be really embarrassing sorry buddy well go ahead Can, the scenes with what oh i don't have an internet connection here oh shit um uh yeah. uh the lead that we had for journey yeah but he he was really good and then sure um, just uh let's go to a brief intermission real quick all right and we're back so what was the, what was the guy's name um rafael sebrian ah. plays roberto and then megan martin plays samantha and they gave really really strong performances and it was amazing to see them work and the the footage they captured, they worked in association with uh, DroneWorks Studios oh, in okay. Houston, mm-hmm. and they had a lot of drone footage. The Laredo Police Department, or not necessarily the police department, more the city of Laredo, um, offered up uh, Chevy Suburbans for the shoot, both both as picture cars for the shoot and transportation for all of production, and. We got to shoot with those and then have like makeshift border border patrol esque, and uh, they gave us boats to to film on this ranch. It was uh, it was just great, and the drone footage they got what? was incredible. Man, but the man. it's coming out in 2018. Oh, so. 2018. So hold on to your hats, boys and girls. Yeah, for that one. Cool. Uh, Man, so was where where they put you up at in that in uh, what should we call it Texas, Laredo, Laredo, Texas. Like I'm um, looking on the map, dude, and it's it's like straight on that border. You yeah. just go south uh, west, like a mm-hmm. little bit southwest, and yeah. So was it beautiful or? I mean, it's it's it's, right a, it's a border town for sure. Yeah. But the landscape they were trying to portray for being a rural Mexico and. Um, urban urban laredo Mm because it's it's based on a border town and um like it it was really just they they filmed a lot of different really colorful places i remember the hotel room we filmed that was was great also dude that's awesome yeah and then after we finished that and came back um or they had i'm sorry you were talking about where they had me up um, production had a production office that I took the footage to, or I took all of the um, equipment to, and I had a uh, Mac display and a Mac tower, or a Mac a display, a Mac tower, and um, the readers for the red camera they they were using, mm-hmm. um, and. Lacy hard drives mm-hmm. was because the hard drives are an essential part part of doing yeah. DIT, and basically they would when they finished filming a scene they would have uh, production run a suburban to where I was. I would dump all the footage, and then have it ready to go and send back to production so they could film for the next day and everything would be good. And like I would have all the footage, be responsible for all of it. So that was a really nice office. Like I could, and my job, I can kind of fluctuate the hours. I can be, if I'm really, really caffeinated, I can go and edit for hours on end. When I when I was doing that Ghost in the Shell project, I remember finishing editing a scene at 4 a.m. and then realizing it was 4 a.m. I was like, wow. And then I went to go see production just because I like to leave my office for a minute because I can't stare at the screen anymore. And uh, I go talk to production and camera team's always happy to see me. And yeah. yeah. We have a little party on set. And I'm, I like to be the the joker on set with my Game Boy Color. and. Dude, you should have brought the flash. Explain this, this <sighs> Instagram okay. uh, phenomenon that you do. <laughs> so my Instagram is JTM019. 
and I do, I've started doing this photography project. Um, the way I see it as a photographer, I really enjoy um, different focal lengths. I like to focus on small objects in the foreground and have a very colorful or very distant background that's very beautiful. And the object I've started using is a little Lego man <laughs> that is the Flash. And I started DC signifying comics. it just by the Flash being a really, really fast character and me doing DIT, I can do it really fast and get, get what you need done really quick. So I like to associate myself with the Flash. When we were on set in Journey, <laughs> um, the assistant camera, Brian Acklemeyer and the other assistant camera, Jeffrey Fontaine, they both had Flash shirts with them. So I forced them to do a Flash day where we all wore our Flash shirts on set. And there's a picture of it, and it's immortalized for me. Dude, so we got to put that flash. on the podcast. Yeah, yeah for sure. For sure. Um, so with the flash, I've started doing this photography series that's the flash on film set. So if you look at my Instagram, you can see different uh, objects that I put the flash against. I've tried to put Instagram. Silly, bro. It's so <laughs> silly. What are you doing, dude? Dude. Yeah. Uh, he showed me this, and I was like, what? what is going on with the Flash thing, bro? Yeah, <laughs> yeah so... It's fucking cool, um, though. I like it. When I do DIT on set, I have a film cart that I've been uh, meticulously trying to develop and buy more equipment. And my little Lego Flash, like I like to post him around my cart and my laptop that I use on set. And you can see on my Instagram, like I'll, I'll post him up with the the clapboard or with a camera at any different moment. I just enjoy seeing him played up against something else, and it's a photography series I just enjoy doing. How many do you have? How many pictures do you get up? I believe there's something around 30 pictures now. Nice. See, post 57. So I have 57 posts on Instagram, but maybe 30 of them are the flash. Uh, maybe a little bit more than that. Maybe nice. 40. Yeah. Well, check out his Instagram. Like and all that like shit. Like it up. Like yeah. it up. Like uh, follow. I actually subscribe. have a funny story about that. Yeah. So, there in when I was filming another film, which I can get to later, Soul Damage that we filmed in Mississippi with Rival Rival Studios um, and Phoenix Phoenix Rising Entertainment. Um, I was. At a night, we were doing a nightclub scene, and I was talking to the assistant camera about this, this phenomena I'd seen on Instagram. This photographer in London, I, let me see if I can pull her name up. What about her, though? Um, she has a similar series, a similar photography series to The Flash. Oh, she has another Lego Flash? It's uh, she does little matchbox cars. It's called traveling cars. Oh. And she's done it all over different beaches, and it oh. her photography is incredible. Way overshadows yeah. anything I can post right now with flash at least. Right. But hers are amazing, and I was telling the assistant camera that um, Instagram had promoted one of her posts, and that post from Instagram had sixty-seven thousand likes on Facebook. Wow. And as soon as I said that to the AC, I had another dude just turn around and be like, how many likes? How many like, likes? What, what does it matter? Like, <laughs> you, are you, you hunting for likes so bad? But yeah. Please like and subscribe, Fox Minutes Radio, man. Yeah. Like, like and subscribe. Everybody man. needs their likes. I need likes and subscribe. Everybody needs their likes <laughs> for their self. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I just keep pumping this shit out because I like doing it. Yeah, right. You, you just know? keep going. Yep. Um, so after I finished Journey, I immediately, um, I came back and there's a friend of mine that went to Cannes with me. His name is Chasen Parker and, uh, he's related to 
Eleanor Parker, who was in The Sound of Music, oh. his grand, grandson. What? That's cool. And uh, I worked on another, it was my second short film that I had done with Chase Parker. It was called, um, it was just called E, because it was about the corruption of Enron. And that oh. was a pretty good strip, script also. And he brought me on as a DIT, and that was another like great experience. It was only, I believe the shoot was only four or five days, but... Uh, turn around and after I finished Enron, um, another Facebook post from an assistant director asking, are there any local Austin DITs? Damn, so you're just rolling into it. Yeah. Well, it's, it's cool. funny because I had, I looked through crew calls and there was a crew call for this as a grip for, because I had done, I had done a little bit of grip work. I don't, yeah. I don't necessarily, I, I like doing grip work. But it's not for it's, me. It's man. not a lot. It's a lot more work than I care for, and I don't like not being able to set up a scene right where the they don't they don't appreciate the what I what I had done or I don't do it well enough because I don't know. Right. So yeah, um, I mean you can grip is something you can jump into and learn, but it's like it's a hard learning curve. Like yeah, it, there was know, a it's a lot of physical labor, and you got to know how mm-hmm. to set up all the stands and. The terminology is confusing, and, uh, you know, every yeah. grip grip truck is different, but, you know, they're all kind of weird. Right. <laughs> so. Love them, though. Love them. Yeah, you right. Love them. fucking dopest. Um, Great sense of humor, all of them. So I decided to take a different turn in my life, and I was thinking I was going to do some grip work for something because the rate was a really good rate. Mm-hmm. It was, I believe, like one, one thirty a day, one thirty a day. And, um, I mean, it's not, not great by, it's great by starving artist terms. Yeah. So I put a bid in as a grip and they, I think I was in the midst of talking to them about the, the, um, contract of it. Meanwhile, I got a, that notification on Facebook saying any Austin DITs and it was Christine Shen, who's a, shout out to Christine Shen. Yeah. She's a great female director she works a lot with uh women in film hmm. so they just got finished up with in the austin area? recently yeah she's in the austin area i believe she did some work elsewhere i can't i can't remember where but um she posted on facebook about the dit and i responded to it and i told her i had had the experience working the laredo project in 48 hour and she wanted to see my resume looked at it and she was like great come on and be this be the dit for this project so i had to uh call back and tell them i couldn't do the or i don't know if i got that far because christine shen said the the project was terror birds and i was like oh no way they just wanted me to come on as a grip let me come on as a dit instead and leave the grip into somebody else (laughs) and so it just magically worked just like that and i was contracted out to do my second feature film doing dit and that was a that was a great experience those Where was people that were awesome that was in austin oh cool like south austin we filmed at spiderwood studios okay. and that was supposed to be because the the project was terror birds and um directed by sean kane who has some other projects out on um sci-fi channel like some really good projects he'd worked on lava lanchulas was one of them but I, it had always been my dream to work on a monster film. Oh. And being that my second one, here it so is, cool. the opportunity yeah. presented to me, just laid in my lap. It was amazing. Like, uh, just a dream come true. That, both that and experiencing Nine Acres be shot like a, a big collective group coming together to make a project that, you know, you put your heart into writing and your characters coming to life. It's just a life-changing experience. It's the best, one of the best feelings in the world. So that people you can always ask, how age. do you get into films? I mean, that's a long-ass way I'm to get into it, but it, it just but happens. It just yeah. happens. And once you start knowing those people and staying in contact with you, I mean, you're always going to, something's going to happen. Yeah. You know. But yeah, damn, dude. <laughs> we worked together on Death and Compromise. Um, I've yeah. talked to a bunch of people on that film uh, already here. Um, but yeah. 
it was cool. I mean, hanging out with you was a blast. We shared a hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> we did. <laughs> was, like, we were roommates, sir. But, but oh. our hours were way off. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't sleep. I mean, we were, we were just doing long-ass days. Yeah, that was wild. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to take a short little break here, and uh, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. All right, and we're back. Let's uh, let's sway away from the death and compromise stuff, you know. The great team, great fun. But uh, let's talk back to you and uh, your We were talking about uh, doing grip and how mm -hmm. I thought I was going to do grip on terror birds. Um, when I was right after, I believe it was right after terror birds, there was a project that surfaced in Round Rock that I don't remember who I heard it from. Oh, I can talk again about uh, Transformers Project and Taylor, too. But I'll, I'll mention that later. Robots uh, in Disney. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Um, so this project was called Dog Walker's Christmas Tale, and it had Jonathan Bennett in it. And it, was, it appeared on a sister company of, or, yeah, sister company of ABC. Oh. Um, CBA. CBA, yeah. The evil twin. It was some <laughs> special like version of it, but it was okay. it showed ABC it showed family on or something. ABC, yeah, so ABC yeah. family, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, the the crafty of that project got gave food poisoning to the grips. What? So the comp the production the craft services poisoned some dude. Yeah. Like food poisoned. So Cross the yeah the poison? grip there were out three grips. For like five days, dude. So, oh man, this is such a great story. Fuck, I gotta. Man. I'm like, I you have my sister drinking culinary arts, man. Cross contamination. Fuck you, dude. That yeah. Like, yeah, that's on you. Yeah, it was. It was something about some like raw chick or something about yeah, ch cooked chicken that maybe it like let let left out and then like reserved. Oh, I don't, time I don't temperature abuse. Yeah, it. something yeah. like that. Okay. Anyways, back to the the, <laughs> so, the result of that shithead. Yeah. Well. At at that time, I can I can divulge more of the story too because at that time I was doing I was working at uh, the movie house and eatery, mm -hmm. which is a uh, like kind of company like Alma Draft House but okay picture a mixture of Alma Draft House and I pick, it's the service during the movie with the leather recliner yeah oh cool cool and uh, oh, that's nice. I was working as a server there. I was working as a real estate agent, and I was doing the grip work on uh, that film at the same time. Like what? it was, it was like How? twelve hour days for five days or for like a week straight, and I was living with my roommates, and uh, I would I would wake up like I remember because it was a Wednesday Wednesday night when the staff could go to a midnight premiere of a certain movie and we watched some superhero movie that at the midnight premiere and then i got a call at eight in the morning that my broker my real estate broker wanted me to show this family to some properties mm -hmm. and i was like okay i like threw on my clothes and ran out the door and uh i go show this property for like four hours and then uh, I take a break and then I, I run home. I go change my clothes and I go work on set for like seven hours until like two in the morning. Damn. And then I leave. I leave set, go home, sleep for a little while, and then wake up and work a double at the movie theater. And then was it a double? I might have. I might have worked like. Oh, so you had some days six. off from the set. He, no. No? All the day, all the How do you set. Work at double? I was gonna say you were doing overnight shoots. That's what I was saying. I I was leaving early. I left my. Oh, okay. Um, I left work early so I could go back to the set, mm. and shoot, and then the next day I showed more properties and then shoot, <laughs> and then maybe the day after that was only the shoot. But yeah. man, I was exhausted because it was it was the end of production. They were doing a lot of pickup shots. They didn't need a whole lot of grip work, but. Like yeah. they still needed the grip work to, to finish the project. I did that project. on uh, last year's ACL. I was I was working at the cafe, so I I you know I take a bus, so I get up at like four o'clock, go to the cafe at six, open that up, 
and then I had to leave around nine, go to Zilker Park and work. Uh, I was doing ga- uh, gaffing. Uh, Brandon Torres got me a gig. Yeah, yeah wow. ACL. And Great so I was guy. in the artist lounge and I'm doing this very basic setup, got it set up. And then for like four days, I just chilled there, went, went and ch- chilled at the Samsung stage and helped them with, you know, kind of PA, got like, you know, running things back and forth. But while they were doing their, you know, AC and those 360 cameras. But I did that for 12 hours. And then I'd go home at like two, sleep for a couple hours and do it. I did that twice in the four days. And like, but I, it was like, you know, if I wasn't doing that, then it was from nine to, you know, one or nine to 11 mm-hmm. at ACL. So it was fucking yeah, exhausting. Hours. Yeah. So I, I feel you on, on having to juggle real world shit and, and film. Yeah, that yeah. was... A really hard time, but you you find the light in what what you do, and you find what you do really well, and you focus on that. And yeah. the other things, the other distractions in your life, just kind of push away, and the road just kind of becomes clearer that what you need to do, as long as you make the right decision. Thank you, Matthew as my McConaughey. girlfriend would tell me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, all right, all right. <laughs> uh, so. I was working all that, and then I was on the shoot, doing the grip work, and I don't really like the grip work. It's hard, but it's, I mean, it could be fun. Yeah, but doing those gigs, like, gets you the the connections to other people you need to know. Oh, um, that's, what, that's where I was getting with that. So, I worked with Jonathan Bennett, and um, he... I got his contact information to help um, because at that time, um, Aaron Kuntz, working Mm -hmm. for Paper Street, was looking for potential potential producers for their feature film they were trying to shoot, which they ended up shooting in Baton Rouge. And I'm really excited to see it. Bummed I couldn't be a part of it. But, you know... I've never been to Louisiana, but I would love to go. uh, Yeah, I... I'm going on vacation with my girlfriend in July. Woo! It's going to happen. It's going to happen. July, gonna... that's not too far away, man. Nope. Gonna eat she some gator, deserves dude. it for sure. You need some gator? I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i try some gator. I'm have sure she's going to have me try it. No, I haven't. Oh, man. Maybe that's try good, on dude. some gator boots, gator skin boots. Just kill a um, gator <laughs> and eat it. And make man, I remember, this, I remember this video that uh, Alex posted of, he's like, just, he said just um location scouting in baton rouge and they were on this boat and this guy holds a piece of meat over the side of the boat and like a nine foot gator just tries to chomp it and then like falls down the boat oh Oh, man it was incredible it was great oh man there's a there's a video i shared on facebook that was um like the that version of but a shark like it's a um great white australian it's an australian news couple Oh um, my! You kidding me? Uh, our uh, Australian news guy reporting on great white sharks, <laughs> and he watches this massive great white shark just ab- obliterate some sort of food, and it cuts back to his face, and he's just like, uh, oh, like shark. with the ultimate oh, gas, yeah. like, oh, what the and fuck am goes, I doing this close <laughs> to these beasts, man? <laughs> I, I'm never going near the water. I can't. He's like, yeah, stuff summer. Right. <laughs> you can just go to the pool. This shit's real, mate. I'm not ever swimming in that shit. Uh, yeah. Right. But um, anyway, the the producer from Paper Street, his name's Cameron Burns, and he texts me and he says, uh, "I was like, man, I really, I I texted him out of the blue because I haven't worked with them in a really long time. Ever since they did, because we do Fantastic Fest bumpers." Right. Like the last one we did Fantastic was... Fest is a festival in Austin, if you're not familiar with it. Yes. It's uh, pretty fantastic. It's pretty fantastic. <laughs> it's very fantastic. And uh, yearly, annually, Paper Street shoots a commercial bit promoting the festival, and they have to say a line of dialogue that says, that's fantastic. Oh, so the, the, the first one they did was with um, like a guy doing five-finger fletching, Ooh. and he's so good. And he's so good, and the wife comes in, and he's like, look, I'm so good at this. And she's like, yeah, but you need a grocery. And he slips and, like, slits her neck. And he's like, but look, no, no, 
uh, no cuts. And she's like, that's fantastic. And she's bleeding out her <laughs> neck. Dude, so and then gross. the most recent one we did was, uh, oh man, what's, uh, Forest, Forest Scissorhands. So it's Edward, the, the okay. theme you had to do was Edward Scissorhands. So we do four Scissorhands, a scene from Forrest Gump replayed as um, Edward, Edward Scissorhands and realizing he has slicing. a son. And she oh, goes, no. he goes, but is he like me? And she's like, oh no, he has hands. <laughs> That's fantastic. And you can look at it. It made the top three in uh, the contest. Very cool. Yeah. It was well, a- if you're not first, you're last, but at least you participated. <laughs> you did really good at participating. Give this guy oh, a participation um, certificate. <laughs> yeah. But Cameron Cameron Burns mm-hmm. messaged me like I, I I sent I sent him a message saying, I hadn't worked with you guys in a while. I really want you to keep me in mind when you do your feature film to be your DIT because I I really liked I did a, a DIT um I did DIT on a short film for them that helped promote their feature film that they're now uh, displaying Camera Obscura. The short film was called Honor Student. Mm -hmm. We filmed here in Austin at uh, Top Notch Burger. That was a good, really good project. We had uh, Laura Schott was our um, main actress. Mm -hmm. She is an amazing method actor, like amazing. Really? Yeah. Huh. And she gets, she has a, um, Wait, she, I believe kind of, she had a role in... What's her range? What does she usually play? Or what, has she done a the, lot of... I believe the mom character, but also I can't... Is she a mom? I mean, that's a pretty easy method. Yeah. But yeah. Um, she was on, I believe she was in Revolution, mm-hmm. a lot of the uh, Austin-based productions. Cool. That she's been a part of. She's a really, well, pretty well-known here in Austin. Um, but I did DIT on their short film, Honor Student, and then I messaged Cameron saying, I hadn't worked with you guys in a while. I'd really like you to keep me in mind for your next feature film. And he's like, yeah, we'll, we'll see where we're going to shoot local, um, the local percentage, because I, I wasn't hired on the last project because they had to have a certain amount of locals to a certain amount of um, crew they bring from Texas because you have to think about the expenses with a hotel room and... and uh, <laughs> feeding beyond craft services and right. uh stuff so but uh cameron told me i was like just keep me in mind on the next project i i, I wish i could have been a part of the last one and i'm excited to see it and he goes yeah our last guy on dit sucked so we need you <laughs> and that was the one thing i needed to, nice. just to be like yeah thanks <laughs> you're good at your he, job guys uh, you you made the you made the wrong choice you didn't bring me on but <laughs> Uh, that one that's one personal grudge. I oh, guess I can't keep it. Dude, I gotta I gotta throw something out there that just like fucking blew my mind. So we were talking drones earlier. You were talking about that yeah. one show had that drone. It's oh. really fucking cool. I love like little drones. They've got these cell phone drones, air selfie, dude. Where it's oh it looks like a cell phone. No. This shit flies, dude. No. This shit flies, oh, bro. The selfie is already so two hundred seventy nine dollars, dollars and thirteen pennies, right on airselfie dot com. Makers, right? yeah, they're, they're you know they're shop dot air. Just imagine you go to the Grand Selfie Canyon can, and send that thing out and don't cool. get it back. And you're like, all oh, you do is you, you put your hand all the way out, and then you wait till till it stabilizes, and then you can control the shit on your phone and course, take a fucking yeah. picture of yourself. But I would use that for like baller shit. Like you just like see the, the the this little fucking I don't know how long it can fly for. Yeah. I need to see this spec. It would be able I'm, to I'm follow the... me on my two fifty. <laughs> no, no. I, mean, I don't think any drone can really do that unless they're super high mm-hmm. up. They have to go way up. Yeah. yeah. And then wind patterns and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing I can. But this thing was fucking dope looking. It looks yeah, like right. a it looks like a tape cassette with four like. Hey, come on. Half What's of your it? listeners don't even know what they that better. is. They better. I mean, you talk about it. I'm fucking old, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how old your I, listeners are, though. I, well, I mean, uh, hopefully they're old enough to I know. Was, uh, when I was at Plucker's Trivia last night, I was talking to this gentleman, and he asked me what um, if I knew what 8-track tapes were. Oh, like, dude. Yeah, of course they're I coming, knew what that said, was. You should have said they're coming back. They're coming they're back. Coming yeah, back, they're making bro. a comeback. Vinyl's coming back. 8-tracks, they're coming back, man. <laughs> Vinyl is definitely Vinyl coming. I'd like to see. Vinyl's definitely coming back. I, I love yeah. the sound of vinyl. And, uh, you know, people are... I had... Uh, oh, 
this girl, Emmy Chen, she was on the, the podcast. She has a band called Billy. She made a little 45. Uh, shout out to Emmy Chen. Beautiful, beautiful girl. Awesome music. Yeah, she, awesome. she's going back to vinyl too, you know, and a lot of lot of uh, bands around Austin, you know, appreciate vinyl. So, oh yeah, I hope no it comes doubt. back. You know, I but love you know, grab local local bands and what keeps Austin going. Yeah, man, for sure. That's right. Um, did you want to get back to? Uh, yeah, let's go back. Let's go back to. So that. I, was, I just want a little throw just out to Jonathan selfie shit. Yeah, selfie shit. And oh, I can I can tell you something about drum works in a minute. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, at that time, when I worked with Jonathan Bennett, I had got his contact information, and I was trying to get Aaron, I was trying to get them in contact so they could uh, help produce mm-hmm. or something. And stuff just fell through, whatever. They got another production, they got another way of producing their film, and it, they made it work. Nice. But the idea of bringing people together and being the one that's that's helping make that bridge is a really like selfless feeling. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. Well, the thing about working on behind the scenes is everyone at the end of the day like feels like, you know, we're all part of a family, you know, we're we're mm-hmm. building this together, we're making we're making a baby. This is our Film little baby. Family, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's the yeah, the product's our baby. Little baby. Right? Fox man, this is my little baby. Thanks for, you know, helping helping <laughs> me with my little baby. It's funny it's funny how we say that it's the baby and mm-hmm. usually the executive producer is always a woman. So she's the one that birthed the baby. Yay. <laughs> she had it all her little soldiers working. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's like just, oh, man. it's a metaphor of like sperm in the uterus. Yeah. <laughs> all I'm, working I'm re- to get it uh, in, you know? I'm re-watching all of Friends with my girlfriend. And, uh, I never watch it beginning that. Oh, man. Since Barack, my roommate, on the other hand, he watches, that. he can like quote that. He watches yeah, that all the time. Definitely that worth in the it, office. Definitely worth the, oh. Uh, I'm not such a big fan of The Office, but no worries. Friends definitely worth the watch. A lot better production quality than I gave it credit for, and <laughs> you know, just gets better. You get more involved with the characters. So, um, but they had a shout the point to where the we're in is I want to shout out to the writers of Friends for keeping yeah, this many keeping people keeping it going for so long. Yeah, and you have these diehard fans that will sit there and watch it on Netflix or Hulu binge or whatever, it, yeah. and just binge it all the time. So, I mean, you're still. Because they finally Shout out put to the writers mm-hmm. of that, okay? They finally put all of it on mm-hmm. Netflix, so do they? Yeah, yeah, so the bingers can be happy. Cause same with Star Trek, man. <laughs> Star yeah. Trek. Is- I was just getting to yeah. the point where where Phoebe, the character Phoebe, is okay. pregnant with three three kids that are um, artificially inseminated by uh, her brother, and uh, I was like, film is making the baby, so it's funny that. <laughs> Yeah. The, that part in Friends was where I'm at. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the, the whole intro, you just go. And uh, when we did trivia at Pluckers, that was one of the the um, categories they had was all questions from Friends. Oh, and I'm like, like we're, we're there, we're the ones. <laughs> what's, the, what's the band that makes that song? It's the rock, rock, Rocketeers? No, the... Uh. No one told you it's <laughs> gonna be this way. <laughs> I don't know. Shout out to that that band that's always stuck in second gear. <laughs> that's always stuck in second gear. Yeah, that's that's the part you remember of it most. When it hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even your year. Beautiful poetry. But will you be there for me? <laughs> I'll be there for you. <laughs> I had a I had a time when my little brother and I used to drive around. Drive around town. I had a '78 International Scout too, which is like a Ford Bronco. Okay. But it was, uh, we put a little lift on it. It had a bikini top. It was nice. And my brother had his. Oh man, what did he have then? Oh, he had the Mustang then. It was the '96 Mustang, um, the not the Lightning Edition, but the one right under that with the, I believe it had the 4.0 in it. Okay. And uh, <laughs> we would get stuck in traffic. He would drop the the convertible top, and he'd be like, "We're stuck in traffic. Time to bump." <laughs> we would just <laughs> bump music. But uh, were you talking about the traffic's all aw- awesome in Austin, Texas? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, drivers are great. 
Yeah. Especially when I drive my motorcycle, you know? Oh, man. Well, how does it feel to, you know, take her out for a little spin after such a long time? It's good. I mean, yep. there there was a, a point when I didn't know if I was going to sell it or not or keep it because it's a, it's a burden right now, but, you know, I got to feel like I'm making the right decision, paying it off and keeping it for a little while. I mean, if I want to get another one, I don't know. Yeah. I'll still be subjective maybe sure. i'll maybe i'll get a forerunner at this point it's, it's, it's not practical to have but it's a toy yeah you know, it's, a, it's, it's a toy a, yeah, yeah it's fucking fun man <laughs> it still gets you to point a point b but i mean it's yeah. nowhere near like your main you're rolling dice at that point if that's yeah, your exactly main. yeah it's, um, it's dang, there was a tragic incident with people i i were really close with and that was you know it's kind of a wake-up call like yeah yeah. You reevaluate why you do it and if it's really worth it and you uh, got I had a friend perish on a motorcycle. So Yeah. Yeah. Like it's you're rolling the dice, man. It's just you and a helmet and and X amount of, you know, miles per hour plus the concrete. <laughs> yeah. Guitar, and right? I've had I've had plenty of people I know that have been in accidents and still ride and I'm fortunate. Yeah. So Anyways. I'm pretty so. safe. Yeah. Um you know, puppies are cute, dude. Oh, have you ever seen like a puppy that's like a puppy? It's so <laughs> cute, dude. Herpy. Oh my god, puppy. Do you have any more uh, DIT information or more more stories you'd like to share about that? We can we can drift off or Yeah, you know. we were Well, because mainly I've worked on three feature films and the third one was what I was referencing earlier with Rival Studios. We um, shot a drama in Mississippi called Soul Damage. With, Soul Damage. Yeah, Phoenix Rising Entertainment. I've never um, been to Mississippi. The, yeah, you can watch the trailer on Facebook or uh, YouTube. Um, it's a really moving story about a young black boy that gets uh, um, sexually abused as a child, and then he grows up and becomes an entrepreneur and is trying to um, start a relationship with this woman despite his uh, past uh, abuse sexually. So Damn. it's a really good story. And as Johannes Miles, who is really a great character to work with, very humble, and uh, um, he thoroughly enjoyed the idea of Flash on set. I believe there was a picture I took where he was in a sleeping scene and I just put him on the bedside counter next to him. It was funny. I also, along with Flash on set, I did uh, a, a picture of assistant camera John John Godot. He's really proud of this. Uh, you can see it on my Instagram. It's one of the, f I believe, like the third post. I, I put Flash on the tip of his shoe while he was like snoring. We were, we were in between t um, shooting in the nightclub and they were taking a break for Crafty or something and John Godot takes a nap and he's this big guy and he's just like st stuck his foot out and I put Flash on the end and I was like Flash sleepy standing with the sleeping giant. It was hilarious. <laughs> he's he was really proud of that one when I took it too. <laughs> John was when he woke up. I'm proud of you too, man. Yeah. We're all proud I'm of you. I'm sneaky. <laughs> well, Flash is well, it's you know, like super when, quick. Yeah. I don't even know how you got that picture, dude. He's really fast. <laughs> He paused just for you, man. <laughs> well, when I when I bought the the kit, Flash didn't have moving legs. What? How does that make sense? How do you have a that, Lego Flash that his legs don't move? Because you gotta pay move? extra for that. Lego's not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> huh? They they quit in uh, two thousand. Let's see, two thousand fifteen. They quit making Lego kits with Lego legs that move. No way, really. I All the Legos? No, I mean they no. still they still have them, but those the I guess the DC series that they have just doesn't have moving legs. When I when I do the Fox Menace TV, that's oh he was this, sorry. Gonna go ahead. A, there's going to be a Lego session. It's like just watch us play fucking Legos. <laughs> right, man. Um, I used to build such awesome like yeah. craft ships and play with my little brother it was it was great that was one of the yeah. best parts of my child that in game boy color 
Yeah. I, I used to play with action figures a lot, like G.I. Yeah. Joe's, uh, Marvel, Ninja Turtles, all that shit. I, had I don't know what it was. I just wasn't a big action figure kind of guy, but yeah. like Legos, I was really interested in because you could build different things. Yeah, I did Legos. Um, Kinex for a little bit. Yeah. Do you remember Kinex? Oh, I love Kinex. Kinex My you grandmother could make, like uh, motorized Kinex. stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, you and then Lego move. Technic, when it came out, they had oh, a little I'd, Lego I'd submarine that, that uh, was was electronically powered you can make the the uh the gears. bottom piece move but yeah. I, I mean i know i don't think it was waterproof but oh. like just the <laughs> idea silly. of a, a submarine that could... that's so fucking silly yeah <laughs> I mean, it's a silly idea now but sold for the uh, kit sold for like right. 40 bucks back don't worry the they'll buy another one yeah go buy another one <laughs> no that was the submarine cannot be in the water christmas and uh, my birthday for my grandmother, it was either Beanie Babies or Lego sets. That fad died out quick. Beanie Babies, everyone thought they were going to be so... I still got so... a huge... Yeah, I still yeah, have a huge collection. Yeah, but they're worthless, man. <laughs> I don't care. They have value to me, man. Yeah, I'm just saying. They're but actually... Yeah, them. they're so valuable. They're at my parents' house. Yeah. Huh. Oh, shit. <laughs> right. Uh, day and age when people try to sell those. People or, were trying to sell those. I mean, those, they try to sell them. And they're like, oh, this, this Beanie Baby, there's only one, and it's worth like two thousand dollars it's not worth two thousand dollars now and whoever <laughs> paid for that then like you got duped dude do you remember uh, the um rick and morty episode we watched about the szechuan sauce yeah the, the latest one on april fools so that was uh mcdonald's in 1985 that was was it not, i think it was 98 oh 98 this is when mulan, oh, mulan came, came out, out. Yeah, yeah that's right um when mulan <laughs> came out McDonald's ran a special uh, sauce that you could Szechuan. dip the chicken nuggets in, and they yeah. called it Szechuan sauce. And Rick and Morty ran a whole episode about it, about wanting Szechuan sauce, because nobody had even mentioned it in like 20 years since it had been away. <laughs> and that the show airing that made people like go into a craze about it, and there was a, a eBay post of unopened szechuan sauce gross 89 thousand dollars no way. how do you st- <laughs> how do you still have that it's unopened not good it's not good it's perished it's why do you care that much that you would <laughs> it's all did about it the szechuan sauce did it sell as far as i know fuck that's funny right good, what are we doing good? with our money yeah. I'm going to start saving little knickknacks. Fuck it. No. That's what hoarders do. Yeah, right. Oh, my God. And they're like, you know what? I have it somewhere okay. in the labyrinth. I I don't mean to branch off this no, direction from can, what you said. Don't worry. But this, this Aaron. Is near the end of the podcast. This is where we just go out there, man. Like, yeah. yeah. I think uh, I'm pretty sure it's it's authentic. Okay. But he has the the prop of Jason's mask. Ooh, which, the original? The original. Oh, shit. I think. It's his, oh. it's his prize possession. I used to have the uh, Michael Jordan playing baseball card for a little bit. Nice. I don't know what happened to it, though. That was a Man, kid. my, my uh, crown jewel was my, my Game Boy Color game selection and my uh, Pokemon card collection. I was mean. Pokemon I would go cards? to I would go to Toys R Us and play Pokemon cards. What? Back in the day, there was like a place for yeah, that. Yeah, you could do that. You could battle, do the the Pokemon card game. They had battles. And they had uh, at tournaments Toys there at Toys R Us. At Toys R Us, there's yeah. a little section. Where yeah, you could do that? my my I friend Alex Demez. When, when I was like, man, that was elementary school, so like nine, <laughs> nine right. years old, something like that. I was I was at Toys he showed me Toys R Us and we were playing toy uh you were playing Pokemon card game. That was awesome. <laughs> back in the day, back in the nineties. Right. The fucking nineties. Mm-hmm. All those memes you see that it's like, you know you're a nineties kid if you the all these things ring a bell. And it's right. all the yeah. shows that are on Boomerang and Nickelodeon that yeah. old school Nickelodeon. Yeah, like Rockwell's Modern Life. I say that with my Pokemon socks. So you're, I mean, you got you brought your Game Boy Pokemon Yellow, right? I mean, I, I play Pokemon the, the red and blue. 
I never got yeah. into yellow because I was never really a big fan of Pikachu. Just... I I liked it. Plus the, I like seeing the progression of how well the characters are animated, because yeah, they had Pokemon Red, Pokemon Blue, or the original, and then they did Pokemon Yellow, and then they rebooted it with um, Game Boy Advance, making Pokemon Color. Fire Red and the other Sapphire one was Sapphire Blue. No, I no. think it was um, em- Emerald Green, I think. I remember they made a green one. Yeah, I never yeah. made that one. But that um, that was Pokemon Red rebooted. Like, all the animation completely... The same game. They put it in color, right? But put it in... I mean, it, it, was it, I think it was in color originally. Was it? Like, mostly. Maybe. For ga- yeah, I have it for game. Well, maybe that's where Pokemon Yellow broke the broke the mold like they had the color yeah. rather than so I Pokemon playing it on a regular red and blue back, but Pokemon like, Fire Red is yeah. awesome to play cuz it's the the same storyline from Pokemon Red and Blue but way better animation plus like double battle thing that's really a, a neat feature but I can't get off on a tangent about Pokemon Pokemon How much Pokemon have has Justin played in the last year Man we we all have our geeky shit. Dude, I play Heroes of the Storm like a motherfucker. I don't know. <laughs> like Blizzard Entertainment, Heroes of the Storm. I play that shit, you know, uh, maybe yeah. a few times a week, you know. Because but. I enjoy skating, I just purchased Skate 3 for my PS3. Oh, nice. That game is incredible. Is it good? It's awesome. Playing a two-on-two against Andrew Reynolds and Terry Kennedy <laughs> from Baker for the championship. You get to create your own skater or some shit? Yeah, nice. that's awesome. Yeah, you skateboard, dude. Yeah. Um, Look at that. I, I try to get, because I get my work, my day job from Thursday to sun, uh, Thursday to Monday. And uh, I try to get skate time in on Thursdays and Sundays. Or it yeah. might fluctuate here and there when I do it. And then my girlfriend and I go on Tuesdays. And she, she like I love the support she has for me. I really mm. do. It's awesome. And uh, she, she'll she stand out in the middle of the skate park and take a picture of me doing my doing my trick against yeah. the ramp. Oh, we'll have to post Shout that out to all too, women man. that yeah. help out. Every yeah. man needs a woman. Yeah. For sure. And every great man is a woman by his side. Right. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. Uh, yeah, brah. And uh, let's see here. Where are we at? Where are we at right now? We're at an hour 22. Wow. Yeah, dude, it goes fast. You don't even know, man. I know, right? We just had, had our first, like, lol, you know, since, like, in, uh, you know, fucking 72 minutes. Yeah. yeah. I'm telling you, man, yeah. film is a journey. Film, you, yeah, you... get into film. Whoever, you know, if you have a passion for it, start talking to people about it, and eventually mm-hmm. you'll get in. You'll get in, bro. There'll be those lull times. You got to just focus on responsibilities and... Um, be there for what you need to do and but when you get the chance to when you get the chance i met when um because i've done several jobs several different odd jobs while film hasn't been all that sturdy for me um i've had to lean on other jobs and i've gotten i've been really really reluctant that i found um the place i work now lake austin spa and resort which is amazing like I love everybody I work with. It's a great job, and uh, but I've worked for Uber and like sister company, Fa- mm-hmm. or not sister company, but same concept, Fasten. And I was taking a rider one time, and he seemed like a artist entrepreneur. And he told me that on on our ride, he told me that he helps write advertisements for different companies as a as a, a jingles or something or whatever. Nice. And he seemed like he was really successful, and he was dressed really nice. And I was like, man, let me ask you, because I'm, I'm 26 myself, and I'm kind of at this middle ground where I'm not finding a whole lot of film gigs, kind of starving artist, if you will, mm-hmm. and I'm working my day job a whole lot. And uh, what age really was it for you that you kind of got off on your own thing and you were able to, that was your only focus where your day job wasn't mm-hmm. like here your fun job if you will picks up so it can be your main job and he was like 29 i was like 
Yeah, I mean, I realize I got some developing to do. I still got yeah, loans to pay off and responsibilities to take care of. But when you can get off and do your passion on your own and it can be sufficient, and that's that's the the dream. Boom. Live in it. Yeah. And then pro- <laughs> procreate from there and develop that and your kids with the same Just get your, uh, core concepts your that you have. Because mm-hmm. if I was... If I had half the work ethic my father did, I would, you know, make mountains because that's where you, where so you think get the it generation. From. We're just getting lazy here and lazy. Yeah, so I your, mean, your cell phones like, definitely if I had help. Half it, the uh, inspiration he did. I'm telling you, know, you and he's it, just like a couch potato. He's just like uh-huh. moving shit with his mind to like <laughs> that's his job. He's just like I've always wanted to lay in my problems? bed and move like do construction in my mind, and now I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> But if I had half the ambition my dad did, yeah. Get your work ethic from your parents. Mm-hmm. And when I had the work ethic my dad had to lean on and like to learn from, it's un- unparalleled. Like uh, it's a lot of um, nature versus nurture. Mm-hmm. And I, the generation just not, it's hard. I mean, it's, it's, difficult being a parent but when a lot of people give up on it and it's just sad like yeah the, i mean i was the raised generation without a, this i was raised develops. without a dad so it's like yeah. fuck i mean sorry that's I one of your main insp- no, i don't care <laughs> this is this is about you not about me you know my yeah. was fucking awesome so i would have yeah. been sheltered then yeah i guess i was pretty blessed to have the parents i did and what they wanted to, the morals they wanted to teach me and the cartoons I had growing up, you know, yeah. that's a blessing too. Man, you're you appreciate. I would love to find animators. If anyone's an animator, I have a great idea for oh, man. for animation. Do you yeah. watch? You said you watch Archer, right? Yeah. That's okay. That one's my favorite show. Right when I came out of school, um, I haven't Georgia seen a new was season, but I've seen most of the episodes. Yeah, Georgia was really coming out to be the hub for film after Dude. you know the start of Texas film incentives being kind of cut a right. little bit um and our the show archer was hiring animators and then right then i was like man i went to the wrong field because i could have worked for my favorite show being an animator for it and life would have been yeah. grand but... i wish i did some animation so i could just make their show that me and my roommate been wanting to make for fucking a year and a half now yeah right do you yeah. have the writing to back it up uh, we, or is it just the concept now? We have the concept and we have the first uh, premise of the script. Oh, okay. Much written. We're going to uh, uh, do a lot of improv dialogue because mm. um, it's based around like just us uh, riffing about some ideas. Oh, and, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's cool. It's called The Stoop. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, if anybody wants yeah. wants to be on an- animation, I would fucking love that shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's something I was mentioning right before... We got off on Archer, and I want to circle back to. Okay, do you remember what it was? No, I don't. I missed it. We're floating on the clouds, everyone. <laughs> right. <laughs> we just had a great time. Yeah. Man. You play any instruments, bud? I used to play a little guitar. Yeah. I mean, I really want to learn a saxophone. I don't know why. Saxophone? What it is? I mean, it's here in Bob Seger. Just yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> That one in Baker Street, mm. it's my jam. <laughs> you uh, at the one of the Rick and Morty episodes ends with Rick singing the song. He's like, "Why not?" Na, 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 na. And I was like, "This is just the perfect end." And it had the episode had David Cross. Um, oh yeah, it's animating like the, the, dream, the, the, the 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 life simulator. Or yeah, life simulator one with mm-hmm. David Cross was the. Um, antagonist alien and yeah. I love his voice He's what is your Kung recipe for dark matter <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we never left the shonies <laughs> that's such a great show I love it Yeah. and their continuity is so on I remember on us point. talking about that yeah, yeah. The, the, when the whole uh, house left and then left into another dimension and then it came back and there was mm-hmm. the crack in the cement and they've had yeah. that the whole series now. And when, like, Summer went to, like, help, it was, like, the Purge episode. Yeah. And Summer had to, like, type in the code and the suit 
blew through the fucking oh, yeah, the ceiling. The ceiling. Yeah, the, the next episode you see boards covering the hole in the opening. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. Oh, pretty man. cool stuff. I just want the season to play already. I Summer know. to be here. We got we got teased in April. Well, summer's on its way. You know, we're in May and you know June. Weather's oh. clearing up and. What do you think? I, I, I'm over? guessing probably August, right? They'll probably come out with it. August still. Oh yeah. August for mm, yeah, New Rick maybe and Morty. July yeah. maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say August. Say August. Yeah. That's just, a good. Just bet. to not get my hopes up in July, be like, oh no, I want to be surprised like I was in April. <laughs> yeah. yeah, April Fool's Day. Yeah. I, I I saw it on Facebook and I was like that's stupid it's just an april fool's thing and then they played it over and over again and i was like well i guess i might as well watch it now and i started it and it started the beginning of the episode and i was like sweet oh and what? then i just kept because they were going. doing like there was you no know, cutsies man they're going no episode yeah one they were going all the way to episode it. yeah there's there's two seasons and then that was season three episode one yeah so they played all subsequently all the way through it for like four days straight yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, it was wild. Watched a little bit of it. A bit of it. <laughs> a bit of it. I don't think you've stopped. Uh, don't say that. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, do you have any plugs? Because this is nearing the end of Fox Minutes Radio. We're already at that hour and a half mark at the moment. So. Oh, man. From I don't know what a gravy, plug is, baby. so I guess I'm... I'm... A plug is like... Uh, I mean... You, you're throwing out names. Do you want to throw out some websites? You want to follow you, basically follow you at you know Instagram yeah, for you sure. Can, you can follow me on Instagram for sure at JTM019. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook. I have my own IMDB page. You can look me up, Justin Mulberry. Um, I'm trying to develop as much DIT experience as I can. Um, one, I didn't get into it at all, but um, being a the next step from DIT is being a colorist. The next step from DIT is being a colorist, and I have to work on that, and that's the next the next phase. Like color correction? Mm -hmm. Oh, dude, that's so important. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, that's it's what vital. made Mad Max look so fucking awesome. <gasps> Amazing. All that had no... What was I going to say? No, like, no CGI. None. Yeah, all practical effects. All practical, yeah. yeah. That's what makes it so incredible. Well, yeah. that and the the tint they put on it that makes it look so oh yeah incredible. But like uh, <laughs> color There's that one scene where they're in the truck and it's all blue. It looks fucking yeah. awesome. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. That's color correction, baby. Yeah. <laughs> A big uh, mm. middle finger to Mel Gibson. Tom Hardy says I can do it better. <laughs> oh, I love Mel Gibson though. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mel Gibson's great. Yeah. What everyone says about him, he got drunk one night. I can relate. Oh, uh, did you see? Yeah. Um, It was Mel Gibson after he hadn't worked in a while. It was about the his daughter working at the chemical plant. She gets mm. poison. Uh, the last Mel Gibson movie I saw was like, uh, fuck, the one where his daughter gets shot in the chest. Like that's straight. the one I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, fuck. Like, end of days, something like that. Uh. Are you looking it up? Yeah, I'm looking cool. up Mel Gibson. Oh, I love Mel. I'm so glad, like... Braveheart. <laughs> Braveheart's great. The Patriot was what? fucking dope. Daddy's Home too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Edge of Darkness. Edge of Darkness, yes. Yeah, I saw oh that in God, theaters. So good. Yeah. He so goes His His performance is crazy. That one time where... He's so good at it. He's, he's walking right up to the... Uh, he's walking right up to the house, and like the, nothing, they, they react to it, and he just... Gets them both in the head. Mm -hmm. It's like moves on, stone yeah. cold. Keanu Reeves oh, that is and fucking cool. one of my other favorite moments from a movie was Liam Neeson and Taken. <laughs> like after he beats the, after he beats the last guy, and he's just like limping, moving forward because he got stabbed in the leg yeah. by that guy, and he's just limping forward. <laughs> and you see the whatever deity he he represents or whatever self. I don't know, procreating thing. And he's like holding the knife to the daughter. And he's like, nah, <laughs> you're done. <laughs> we can make a deal. You're done. 
But just the limping yeah. thing like makes it. Oh, He's never know. gonna stop, man. He's badass. Yeah. Edge of Darkness, though. Oh man, yeah. I'm so glad he did good. You know, with Hacksaw Ridge as a director, he's still. Oh, I didn't. Kinda, I didn't actually see that one. I got. Uh, I think Andrew Garfield got nominated for Best Actor mm-hmm. because of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, all I heard about. He's phenomenal yeah, in it. That that it's all about that guy that uh, just volunteered but refused to have a gun and just save like seventy people's lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fucking fantastic. <sighs> mm-hmm. Yeah, bro. So, um, thank you for coming on, man. You're, of course, you're I'm a beacon glad. of knowledge. Uh, you're welcome back anytime. Obviously, we'll try to set something up. I know you got something in the works that is worth talking about. So, yeah. I'll uh, I'll get back with you, and I'd love to have you back on. Thank you so much, man. For sure, of course. Yeah. I was oh. glad to have you be on. Oh, you're the best. <laughs> All right. All right, everyone, that's Fox Manus Radio. Uh, Wayne Vashon out. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, please like and subscribe, and I'll leave some links below in the description so you can always follow my boy Justin, okay? All right, bye.